Hey everyone, welcome back to another devlog for Polar. It is about 5.30 p.m. on Monday, just got back from work, and this is going to kick off our second week of development on this new project. Here's where we left off at the end of the first devlog, just a very basic prototype scene. I've got my Polar Bear model that I created, as well as his walking animation that you see there, and I used some pre-existing assets to kind of lay out this forest and some basic scripting to get him moving through the forest. I don't have a ton of time to work on Polar tonight, but I do think this jumping task is just about the right size for what I can do. Now, I think this will be pretty simple, just adding a force to the bottom of the bear to propel him up into the air. But besides that, I also want to lay out some scaffolding for tracking the player's state and the player controller. So I'm going to get to work on that. Well, what little progress I've made here took much longer than expected, but I'm sure that will be a theme throughout the development of this project. Now we have a bear that's moving slightly faster, and when I tap spacebar, he kind of jumps and floats in the air. It's quite a bit more floaty than I'd like, but I think this is progress. At the very least, you can't chain jumps together, and uh, I think we're just at a good point here for capturing input. But that's about all the time I have today for development. Tonight should be pretty interesting, actually. I'm about to head to a local fish store and find some little friends for my freshwater aquarium. So far it's only been plants, so this should be pretty interesting. Well, unfortunately, it's been a bit of a busy week, so we have fast forwarded to Friday morning. Now, I have made a little bit of progress since Monday, so I'll go ahead and show you that, and I'm hoping to make a bunch more before work today. Looking at the gameplay here, you can see most of my changes are focused around the jump mechanic. He's now got a little animation where his legs kind of go forward and back as he jumps into the air, and the jump is way less floaty and more concise. And I did this by increasing the global gravity modifier in the game. So this is closer to where I want it to be, not quite perfect. I'll go ahead and show you what this looked like in the code. A lot of my work on this jumping code was focused around state management. Now, as you guys know, I have this movement state enumeration here that kind of keeps track of all the different states the player can have. And down here in fixed update is the main place where I act upon those states. I kind of switch over them here and determine what kind of forces we want to be applying to the player. Even further down, I kind of look at input from the player to determine if the state should change and also look at certain properties of the player, like the rigid body velocity to determine if the state should change. And even further down, I'm looking at collisions. So, what I've realized by looking back at this code is that my state management is all over the place right now and I need to kind of make that more concise and keep it all in one place so that it's easier to extend and easier to maintain. And I think the way to do that is a state machine. I was noodling on my iPad a little bit and here's what I came up with in terms of a diagram of all the states I expect the player will be able to have. Now this might still grow at some point, but already you can see with all the relationships between the states, it would be kind of crazy if I tried to implement this all in switch statements inside the update functions of my player controller. So my goal this morning is to try and write some code that abstracts a lot of the state management outside of the player controller class and gives it some structure so that I can reuse it on other objects and just keep my player controller a little bit more clean. Alright guys, it's going on about 7.45 now. I need to get ready for work soon, but I finished all the work that I wanted to complete on the state machine and I feel like I nailed it. Things are looking really good and way more organized, so I want to go over it really quick just to help some of you guys out there who are also designing player controllers. The core of my new state management code consists of two interfaces and a class. I want to go through these in an order that hopefully makes the most sense to you guys. The first thing I want to talk about is my state interface. Now this will represent a state like jumping or walking or idle. Now every state needs to implement these four functions, enter, execute, execute physics, and exit. And each of these functions will contain the functionality that the state is responsible for executing when we enter that state, when update is called on that state, when fixed update is called on that state, and when we exit the state. Next up is my state machine class, which is responsible for keeping track of the current state as well as changing between states using the functions that are defined within each I state. Finally, I created this state managed interface, which only has one function request state. 
Now it's my intention that my player controller will implement state managed and within request state I will implement exactly what you saw in that diagram on my iPad. Basically just the concrete list of rules of which states can transition to which other states. Back over my player controller, I've now got a nice little region for state management where I create all the different states I want to have and implement my request state function. We'll start off by looking at an example of one of the states, specifically the jump state. Now each of my states I initialize with a reference to the player so that the state can act upon the player as it needs to. Apart from that, I implement the four required functions, enter, execute, execute physics, and exit. Now for jump, the only important thing is enter. And when we enter this state, we wanna add the jumping force to the player and start playing the jump animation. I don't really need to do anything specific while we're flying through the air or when we exit that state, so these functions are left empty for now. Next up is the request state function, which contains definitions for all the eligible state transitions. Now, this code is pretty straightforward, and it's going to match the diagram that I showed you on my iPad. To wrap things up, I'll show you how I'm actually using all this code to operate on the state of the player. The top of my player controller here, I create the state machine, and that's what we're going to be using when we're reacting to physics or input or anything else to request new states for the player. You can see when we start here, the first thing we do is request an idle state because everything starts with the idle state, and I immediately transition to walking to get the player moving. After that, you can see an update and fixed update. We're calling update and fixed update respectively on the state machine, just in case any active state has code that needs to run an update or the physics update. Further down here, we're using the state machine to request new states based on observations we're making. So in this case, we're capturing input from the spacebar and requesting a jump state. Further down here, we are checking to see if the player is falling based on their velocity and requesting a fall state. And if we are colliding with the ground, we request a walk state. Well, I talked about a lot of code this morning and I really hope it was helpful to some of you guys who are designing your own player controllers for the first time. Please let me know if you like this more technical style of content. I'm happy to sprinkle either more or less of it in based on whether or not you guys find it helpful. Now that said, it's like almost 8.30 and I'm probably gonna be late for work, so I'll catch up with you guys later. Good morning and welcome back. It is Saturday morning just after seven o'clock and today I wanna to pick up kinda of where I left off yesterday. Now that we've got our state machine finished up, I think I have a good foundation for building out jumping, sliding, and dashing. So I wanna take care of those. Specifically jumping obviously is already in progress, but I wanna add variable jump heights, meaning if you hold the space bar, you'll jump a little bit higher than if you just tap it. So I'm gonna to get to work on that. As I had hoped, that was actually really easy to implement with my new state management system. Up here in the top of my player controller, as you might have imagined, I have a boolean now for keeping track of whether or not we're holding the jump button. Once that's set to true, we can see that used down here in my jump state. Because we're going to be adding more forces to the player, I'm calling this an execute physics as opposed to execute since we want this to run in fixed update. And if jump is being held, I'm just adding a little bit more force to the player. So we'll go ahead and see what this looks like. Of course, if I just tap the jump button, same as before, but if I hold it, it's a prolonged jump where he kind of stays up in the air longer. I'll be able to tweak this a bunch. It might not be perfect right now, but the general concept is implemented, so I'm gonna move on. Well, I spent far too long creating some goofy dash and slide animations in Blender, but now that I've got those done, I headed over to Unity and tried to implement at least dash so far, and here's where we're at. You can press D, and he gets an extra force applied to his x-axis, and he executes that funny little animation. But we don't have an end state for him yet, so he just flies across like Superman. Better keep working. All right, so after a few more minutes, I think we've wrapped up dashing for now. If I go ahead and play here, we'll see him lumbering along, and if I press D, we'll see the dash animation as well as a temporary boost of speed along the X axis. We can also dash from the jump state, so if I hit spacebar in D, we'll see his upwards velocity pause, and he'll dash along the X axis, and again, you continue walking afterwards. I think this ended up being pretty cool. All these values are tweakable, but uh, I'm happy with how it turned out so far. I want a bit of a roll this morning, so I'm going to just keep on going right through the slide control. Now, the slide is going to look a lot like the dash for now until I start introducing some declines in the topography of the map. But we'll go ahead and get started on it and see what we can get done. Alright. 
Alrighty, so let's take a look at our slide. If I go ahead and play and press the S key, you'll see a goofy little animation where he drops to the floor and slides and in our case currently slows down. Now my plan in the future is that if the bear is moving on a decline, meaning like downhill, the slide will actually accelerate him and continue on. However, in this case we're on flat ground so we see a little bit of slowing down due to friction and once we hit a minimum velocity we'll pop back up and continue walking. Now that's a little transition from sliding to walking could definitely be improved, but I'm happy with where this is for now. Just like the end of the last dev vlog, I finished up by changing up the scene a little bit. Of course you see some taller trees, just generally more foliage, and the ground is now white as if it were covered in snow. This week we made a ton of progress, of course having the state machine stuff working is great and that enabled us to implement a lot of these cool controls which are actually pretty fun to use. I'm really excited about implementing sliding on the downhill, I think that'll be a really engaging gameplay mechanic. Hope you guys enjoyed the devlog. Of course, if you did, let me know with a thumbs up. It helps me out a lot. I had a lot of fun programming this functionality this week. And next week, we're going to continue with core gameplay mechanics as we did this week. But we're going to include some pickups and obstacles. So looking forward to that. I'll see you guys in the next one.